So to do a bit of a follow up for my stress analysis video that I gave you guys as a bit of an overview, um, I've decided to bring in a, a project that uh, to try and sort of show you how this may or may not work. Um, so this is like a metal folding shovel, like a camp shovel. Um, theoretically, you should be able to um, you know, it would fold over like that. Uh, you tighten up the handle down here. The handle would then bolt, you know, butt up against this edge, and that would stop it from folding or unfolding. Um, so it's just a, a screw thread in there, a bit of sheet metal work there, tubing, and you'd weld all those components together, you know, etc. Like that. Um, so I'm not going to go through the process of actually making that because that's not what we're sort of here for. Um, here to look at the, sort of the stress analysis part of that. Um, if people want this, well, they can get in, you know, get in contact with me, and I might be able to send them through the drawings for it or something like that. Um, so once you've done your design, uh, you can then head across into the simulation space. Uh, I've actually already done the simulation in this, but I'll go through how I've done that simulation um, rather than running through it and then having to wait for it to actually run the test and, and things like that. Um, so I did. We did uh, a few different types of those. But the first one that we did was the static stress test, uh, and then the second two I did were non-linear st um, st static stresses. Um, to do that, you basically go finish results. When you go, when you go to your study and you after a new study, um, you can tick on these or which ones you want. Uh, static stress is the first one that we did up there, and then the next ones were these non-linear static stress. Uh, test down here. Um, so once you pick one of those and then create study, it will ask you to then create the study. Uh, and you go through basically and you got to uh, add in the data for each one of these things. So for study materials, um, basically if you click on this, it'll bring up this window here. This is what the materials are made of and whether you want to override those settings with some other material. So at the moment, all of my materials have been set to steel. That's what I made them uh, and assigned them when I actually did the design work. Uh, but if I missed that and they were the, the default material or I wanted to test this as something else, this is where uh, we could create a separate type of file. So for example, if the static stress example I did here in study one was all as steel, I did it the same as model. If I wanted to, I could go through and then change these plates into anything that's uh, any type of material that I can find in here and it will simulate that different material. So if I knew I could change it into a different type of um, steel for example, I could build it out of titanium uh, we could look at the difference between that. Um, I could go back up to stainless steel, I could look at the same thing in, in stainless steel. We've got plastics in there and things like that. Um, so I might just choose to do this out of Aluminium, and let's do the same for this one. Now, there is a way, and I haven't worked it out yet, so um, I'll be able to select all of these in one go and change the whole lot in one hit. Um, but because I've only got a few parts, it doesn't actually take that long to go through and um, assign each one. I'm sure somebody will be able to tell me in the comments if they uh, how they actually go through that process and do that. and. Um, Probably something like you know selecting it up here at the top or something like that, and then doing it. Or something. Anyway, we've assigned all our materials now to aluminium. So effectively, we can actually do a comparison study now between this one and what we've done up here in static stress uh, in terms of material. So I'll set this up the same way as I did the one up here. Um, the important thing I think to remember is you've got to work out what it is you actually want to test. Um, so if I go to constraints. Constraints are what you want to have fixed or what you want to be able to move and what you want to be able to uh, fix is um, on these axis, so X, Y and Z or move on those things or combination of both. So I'm just going to fix the blade here the same as what we did in the first one and go OK. Next is loads, you apply load to this thing and we're just applying a force and I'm going to put this in the same position as what we did in st uh, study one so we can look at same for same and what we did was we picked this face in here which is at the top of the bracket if you can get that we did a 
thousand newton meters or a thousand newtons on that so that was our force and from that uh, automatic contacts I just clicked on that the time test like point one of a mil basically that's where all your joint work is in there so if you've done all your constraints in the design part of it uh, or joints um, that should be fine it'll come up with um, that now it'll solve it'll come up with like under the solve part of it here at the moment we've got some issues around that and it'll say things like um, I've got some interference between parts and things like that now I reckon there's two ways you could go about doing a test one is to bring in your whole model as what we've got there or one is that you or two is that you then only bring in the parts of what you need so if I was trying to run a stress test on these brackets, just these brackets, and how well they were welded to uh, the blade, I guess, or the shovel, and we wanted to look at the safety factor in that part of it, then I wouldn't bring all the handle in it. I think I'd leave all that out because I think that that'll throw off uh, the data. Um, okay, so we've done that. Contacts have been solved. We've got a little green tick, so our pre-flight says basically everything's all good. And then we hit on solve. Uh, when you're in Solve, um, we've got to do this one on the cloud. So we we'll click on Solve Study, and it then pushes that out to the cloud. That should show up with a nice little window in a second. So here it goes. It's going to the cloud. We've got um, basically it gets sent, uh, and then it will get basically queued, solved, and it comes back to you um, when that's good to go. So just waiting for that to do that now. So you can see that the um, sending is complete. It's now solving it. It's almost finished solving it, and then it will uh, return back to us. Seventy-six percent done. And then what we can do is we'll get some data from this when this finishes, and then we can compare that to um, our static stress up here. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm going to pause it. All right, so you can see that um, all those things are complete. Our results have come back to us. You can see here where the bracket has de deformed and it's shifted you can see the sketch outline of where it was um, if we look over here we've got actually got our um, safety factor try that again um, you can see that we've got our safety factor is at 5.57 uh, if we look at our scale here basically what's in the red is when the material actually deforms um, between the yellow is like still within safety regions green is really good and if it's in the blue yeah, you've probably over engineered it is sort of a rough a guide so we're even here now we're well in, within the safety margins of what we um, what it will do uh, even if it was in the yellow and it was like three or something like that yeah, it would still be in within the safe margins of that um, so what we could do then is if we know that it's way safer than that we could look at whether it's over engineered and whether we can make it um, a different material uh, and so that way would be one way of looking at that. Um, the safety factor is obviously gives you some um, some uh, values of where you can go with this. Uh, other data that you might look at from this design would then be looking at the <coughs> uh, if we can find it the stress analysis. Oh, so so we got load case one safety factors down here. If I look at where the stresses are, uh, it'll highlight the main stress points of our object. Um, and that might be where you think, okay, well, do we need to run like a fillet well down on the inside to try and reduce this stress here? Um, does it need to be there? Um, if I go to displacement, you can see that our main displacement, if we go by our color scale, is in red. Uh, and that's because our, our handle has moved the most when this has shifted. So this, obviously as this has moved a couple of millimeters, that's magnified as it goes up here. And that's one of the reasons why I, I think that 
if you're doing your simulation, you could potentially leave these components out if they're not part of what you want to test because I think that they could potentially throw some of your data out, especially if you're looking at displacement because obviously all the displacement's up here, but you're not actually looking at that, you're analysing perhaps these brackets against that blade, in which case this is irrelevant. So you'd want to take that out of the simulation, I think. Um, so you'd have to clone your, uh, clone your design and remove those parts from it. So you can flick through all of your, uh, where the main strains are, you can look at different things there and look at the data within that. Um, so safety factor. All right, so and I was saying that we could do a comparison. So let's see whether we can get this to work. So if I go to compare, and I might have to rerun static one because it's um, moved since I've done something. But if I go to, it's only letting me do number four here for some reason. Um, which is a completely different test. So what we might do is, let's just go, oops. Go finish compare, and I want to just go into this motion one here, and let's see whether we can. Um, we might have to quickly re rerun this, and what? So if we can solve this one, what I'm going to quickly do is look at the pair of those. So while we're waiting for that to upload and solve and come back again. Uh, what we're going to do is quickly jump over into Inventor. So here's our same file in Inventor. Um, I just exported that as a step file from Fusion, imported that into uh, Inventor 2020, and went into the uh, Environments tab, went into Stress Analysis, which is here. It's grayed out because I'm actually still in the analysis part of it. Uh, same sort of procedure in terms of assigning materials, uh, assigning the constraints or what's fixed and things like that, assigning the loads in terms of force or pressures that are going to be acting upon that, uh, assigning the contacts. Um, the, I don't haven't done a mesh view, but then basically sim, uh, simulate, which is solving that, uh, and then that comes up with your data. So in this case, it's a little bit um, different in terms of uh, fusion. I find it a little bit more informative than in than Inventor. Um, but the information is sort of still there. So if I looked at a safety factor, same as what we did in Fusion, for example, you can see that here, uh, this is meant to be running the same test as what we did in the other one. Uh, we got a safety factor of 3.62. So it should still be sitting in here, which is, which is the minimum of that. Uh, and then we, again, we can look at different, uh, stresses. So you can look at different stresses on each of the axes, or you can look at it, um, across the whole thing. You can look at then the, if we were to do displacement again, and um, you can again see that the main displacement is on the handle, not down here. Um, so these ones here are actually like, um, I guess like the individual parts of that, whereas the ones that you've got at the top here are sort of the overview of all those sort of things. So you can look at uh, stress overall, or you can look at the stress on a particular axis and how that affects and where those stress points are. So you can see that there's a higher stress, obviously, right here in this point here, um, where you would think it would be. So you can actually then use this data in here to analyze what, you, what you're going with. All right. Um, okay. So that's sort of the same with Inventor. You can then get it to spit out a report. So you can do that. Um, you know, you can have different size images in there if you want to do that. Uh, where you want those to be, what you want to include in your report, so you can tick boxes here, etc. Um, studies, and then if we go format, you can either spit that as a HTML, HTML, um, or rich text. Uh, HTML, normally the default, if I go OK, you can see it's going through, doing it, getting all the different pictures and things like that. And then what it does is give you a nice report where it has all that data in there. Um, and you can go through and there's all your different, um, where we applied our forces. 
So we what faces that we selected to apply our forces on our on our little shovel. Um, where our contacts were, uh, what the force was that we applied to that, um, result summary in there, and that will give us all the little graphics of how each one of those little things. So you can see that that produces a great range of data, uh, which you could then use to put in a nice report and make some informed decisions around what that data is. So let's just jump back into Fusion and still trying to solve that. Okay, um, what else can I tell you with the inventor? So, yeah, so that's basically where we did that. So again, that was like, so this is my shovel in the assembly environment. If I go to um, environments and then stress analysis is where it was. And then obviously you go through the procedure there. Um, so that's how you can apply, apply that. So if you knew the cost of this sort of thing, then you could work out um, you know, safety factors and stuff like that. Then, if you were to make it with a different material to make it lighter or whatever, um, then you can say, is there a better cost to, you know, safety factor within that or something like that? Okay, it's now solved it. It's just, we're coming back again. So, I'm almost there. why this may have um, uh, changed slightly is because when I moved the handle from when at the beginning of this video uh, it would have changed the dynamics of what that test was from the original thing so maybe that's why it's come up the exclamation marks in there there we go close okay so you can see a, fact, a safety factor on this is at 2.01 so when we have al aluminium in the, uh, the, sorry, mild steel is in this first static study and we had aluminium in study six, uh, and the aluminium had way better safety factor than the steel. So it was, you know, but aluminium could be a more expensive material. So therefore, you know, you can make some judgments around, is it going to be more, uh, you could have a, safe, a safer product, <coughs> but it's going to be a more expensive product to make it out of aluminium and maybe potentially harder to weld, TIG weld comparing to uh, using mild steels could be a cheaper material just using your MIG welders uh, and, and things like that. So I said we could do a um, side by side scenario. So let's just uh, close that. And you see that we've got two green ticks on there again. Uh, so let's do our comparison and see whether we can get this to now do what we want it to do. So we want uh, study one on one side and study six on this side. So let's go to study six. Okay, so these are our two shovels. Uh, study one was the one out of um, mild steel. Study six is out of aluminium. And you can see now we've got our safety factor side by side. Uh, you can even see on the um, deformation how much it uh, moved. Uh, it's, it's moved a lot less here on that on that than it has over here as well on the terms of the handle and how far it shifted. So um, you can you know play out some great information about that. Uh, you can do an animation in here, so you might be able to do that. Um, if we go to speed fast and then we go steps to make that I don't know twenty uh, and two way and play. You can see that it animates this little shovel here. Uh, we have to do both to get both of them going. But yeah, you can see that. So you can do animations on what you're wanting to do. Uh, we can also then go back down into our thing. You say, okay, well let's look at the uh, displacement. I said deformation before, but I mean displacement. Sorry. Uh, and so we can look at that and like compare data from there to there. Um, and so as you can see that this is uh, a lot further away 
in terms of our maximum values compared to this one. Um, you can then look at um, the strain perhaps and then get same on this one and go strain. And again, you can check out whether your values are together or closer or further apart, things like that. So there's a good way of actually comparing data between two different studies uh, and then being able to do that. Um, we can go finish compare. I don't think you can um, uh, pull out a result out of this. So if we go finish, uh, you can't get a result out of that, but out of your study here, you can produce a uh, report, same as we did for Inventor. Uh, but we could actually include both lots of data. So if we wanted to include study one and study six in there, we can actually um, add both sets of data to that. And we can make sure that we've got the same things and, and same materials. Um, and then we can go to save and then so we'll just save this to the desktop. Again, it saves it as a HTML document, but you can probably convert that across into a PDF. Or you can make that as a multimodal type of thing and then talk to that or put that into something. So here's our study report. Uh, scrolling down, it gives obviously all the different materials, the steel, um, yield, yield factors and stuff like that for the steel, the bonds, the constraints on where they were fixed, the loads are where we applied them, and the results for that, and then obviously the images that we had, and then the study six, and again, same sort of thing. Aluminium gives us the data for the aluminium, which is great because this is all of your um, quantitative data that you want to be able to do. And then you're looking at, you know, making judgments around the quantitative data in terms of whether it's good or bad or things like that. And then obviously there's all your data again for uh, displacement, things like that, give you a nice little colorful graph. But um, so yeah, so that's sort of pretty much a wrap, I guess, of how you. And obviously you could um, expand that further in a little bit more detail perhaps. Um, you may be able to get, if you weren't physics trained, look, I'm not very strong in that department, but, you know, I seek help from our science faculty if I need help from that. Uh, and they could help through that and or, and or the kids could take that into their other curriculum areas to work through that as well. Uh, also it gives you the minimum, where the highlights, where the uh, maximum values and minimum values are as well. That's what those little tags are. Um, so I hope that sort of gives you a bit of an idea of how you could perhaps use uh, stress analysis to see where obviously how, how sound your product is, where the potential um, weak spots are in terms of, of, of that. I mean, you could do a separate analysis between, in this case, between, perhaps between this swivel point here and the threaded shaft or things like that, or you could actually run one uh, on the actual loading that you can put on the handle. So you can actually run a whole range of different simulations simula yeah, uh, on your product to see where its weaknesses are and trying to inform your designs about how well that could be improved or things like that, or what materials you might want to make that out of. So I hope that's all been helpful and um, yeah, have a good uh, term too.